Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Friday edition of Mac Mirror with Friends. Um, welcome to the show, everybody. My name's Gareth Bell. We're an extremely white uh, new Mac Mirror t-shirt. It won't last. Something's going to get dribbled down to here. Um, let's introduce a few people. Um, our star behind the bar, uh, welcome to uh, Camille. Camille Kasonka, bring him on. Hello, guys. Hello, Gareth. Uh, How are you? Uh, well, good, good tonight. We've got some special guests and uh, I know friends of yours as well tonight. So delighted to introduce uh, two guys um, really big in the Nottingham bar scene uh, for many years. So uh, we're looking at uh, introducing uh, Charles Reed. Bring him in. Is he there? Hi there, guys. How are you doing? Charles, good to see you, buddy. Hello, Carol. Uh, come okay. in. I got it. You're right. And last but certainly not least, uh, Charlie Carrington, um, also from the Nottingham area. Bring, bring him in. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Charlie. Hey, guys. How are you doing? <laughs> well, yeah, great. Good here. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Um, I hope we're going to have a good show tonight, a bit of fun as we do on a Friday night. Um, yeah. A little bit different tonight. Well, one of the theme is tonight is um, uh, we're talking about competition cocktails. And uh, in these two guys below, we've got both competitor and judges. So no fighting, guys. Uh, be play friendly. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> we want a, we want a nice clean fight tonight. Um, but what we hope is that tonight you're going to give us a little bit of an insight about what it makes to take to create a competition cocktail, and maybe what it makes to to actually judge a competition uh, cocktail as worthy of being winner. So we're looking for both sides of the coin tonight, and uh, we're going to make five count of one, two, three, four, five cocktails wow. tonight on the show. Um, I'm not going to make five because I'll be falling off the back of my seat. <laughs> uh, but the guys are going to make five. I'm going to join in on, on two or three of them just to uh, uh, just to see if I can get my little bit of amateur note in. But, um, guys, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, ladies first, as always. I'm sorry. Charlie, come on. Give us a bit of a bio. Where, where have you been and what are you up to? Uh, so I've been a bartender. I've stayed in Nottingham pretty much most of my bartending career, about six, five, six years. Uh, worked in some really cool places. I've worked in a couple of places specializing in whiskey more recently. So that's always good. And uh, but also more recently, well, before lockdown, of course, I started to move into like event space stuff and kind of freelance working. It's just a lot of fun getting to travel a bit more and see a lot of people. I think that kind of goes back to I moved around a lot as a kid, like from Germany, Scotland, wow. like, yeah. yeah. So a lot of different, not too exotic, but uh, yeah. Wherever you lay your headphones, that's your home. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but obviously in lockdown, uh, not a lot to do except uh, keep practicing making drinks. And actually, I've had a. There's a lot of online kind of resources at the moment now available and for free as well, which is awesome. So yeah. coming back a bit to education, re-educating myself a little bit about kind of history and other stuff maybe I didn't know too much about before. Well, we found these online shows during lockdown an absolute sort of godsend as a communication channel. It just oh, opens yeah. everything up. Oh, yeah. I actually picked up a little tip from last week. Unfortunately, uh, I can't do it today. I haven't got a blowtorch, but I really, really wanted to do a smoky finish uh, one of my ah, cocktails. Wow, so that, that, that'll, be, that'll be revamped for later. Hey, Camille, that smoky mode head More you did come. last week, man. It was awesome, wasn't it? <laughs> um, okay, Charles, tell us a little bit about yourself too. Hi guys, I'm Charles Reed. Um, as Charles was saying, we're bartenders from Nottingham. Um, I'm kind of new to the Nottingham bar scene itself. A uh, bit of history, uh, background about me. I was born in Zimbabwe. I grew up in South Africa, came over when I was about 12, 13 years old, and then uh, started bartending by accident, not at 13, obviously. Uh, started <laughs> bar back in for friends uh, around 17 or 18, uh, outside areas of Manchester. Um, so just did that for about a year, year or so, and then a friend of mine, he was working abroad for an active holiday company. I was like, come, it's six months of fun. The pay's rubbish, but you'll enjoy it. You'll pay for everything. I was like, I'll pay for everything. That sounds good. So I did that for like two, two, two nearly three years. So I traveled to Greece, uh, worked in France, worked in Andorra. It's not, it was just more about the fun experience about behind hospitality. Um, yeah. Taught me a lot about um, the restaurant industry itself. Um, and then coming back, came, to, came back to England to the real reality of actual builds uh, and then needed proper job. So I just started bartending again, just fell back into the restaurant trade first. And then I worked in a cocktail bar to learn my trade um, in Bar for Bar Wizards Lounge. Uh, really good guys there, still speak to them. And uh, worked a little bit in private events with them. Uh, that got my kind of idea for later on to actually have my own events company. So I had this idea with a fr close friend of mine, but my actual partner, made it real like we had this idea 
pieces of paper, scraps of paper everywhere. She's like, okay, stop messing around. I'll do this properly. So she helped us set up the business about two years ago. And that's what we've been running uh, wow. privately since then. I work currently in Ginseco as a general manager of a gym bar. Uh, so I'm still in the cocktail industry, but we focus on events. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, you, you guys got to uh, go on, come on, sorry. Sorry, yeah, so it's, you know, our events company is, is called Rhubarba Events Limited. Uh, we specialize in weddings, tasting sessions. Um, we also do garden parties, obviously, during lockdown. So if anyone's interested, give us a bell on Facebook, Instagram. We'll come drop everything off, have the party and there for you all. And during this uh, lockdown, what do you do? Something special to, to, keep, to stay in contact, to do something uh, unique, different for your people? Yeah, so during lockdown, like Charlie was saying, we're always experimenting with different brands. Obviously, this, uh, having known Camille um, through other brands, he brought this to my attention, and it's really good to learn and enjoy another brand itself. So we have started invoking some of these in some of our cocktails that we've been serving for the events industry as well. Um, so, yeah, it's just been a learning experience. I've done another competition like the Jägermeister one, all these little bits to do. and uh, still keep the brain going. Uh, Take it over. It's really <laughs> yeah. Because we will be back. We'll be back behind those bars sometimes, guys. I, I, I can feel it. <laughs> Thanks so much for, um, uh, you know. You're always welcome in Nottingham. Oh, we'll be there. I, I used to work yeah, in Nottingham. When we go to Nottingham, we need to stay there for two days. Sorry, no. Camille, go on. When we go to Nottingham, we need to stay there at least for two days. Uh, There's a lot so. to try, honestly. Really. I was just about to say I worked in Nottingham for a couple of years and I I, opted, I did the commute from my place in Milton Keynes here up to Junction 25 um, yeah. for, for quite a number of years. So I, I, I know I know the area well. So, um, yeah, welcome tonight. Thanks for that introduction. Really interesting. You guys have um, you've put your you know your onions, you've put the hours in definitely uh, for, for tonight. So I'm really looking forward to um, a bit yeah. of a masterclass. So tonight, um, the challenge we set you guys is to use a couple of our, um, our whiskeys and we give you one um, one. Kind of smoky whiskey and one yeah. unsmoky whiskey. So the first one, here we go. Uh, Svens Rook American Ek. Svens Rook, sorry, not Ek. Uh, I get those mixed up. Rook is the um, Swedish word for smoke. So this is our smoky recipe, which is yeah. uh, famed for having um, uh, uh, twigs that we burn on it. So those are juniper twigs we add to the peat, just a small amount, but they make a huge difference to the flavor. That it brings a more smoky ambience rather than a peat ambience. So it's a different characteristic uh, together. So we set you that challenge on one side. And um, that stuff is, um, uh, you know, it's uh, about five years old. But um, the, the thing about this one, it's, it's matured in virgin American oak for five years. So it's taken all of its color and it's getting a lot of vanilla notes uh, coming out and the oak coming from the uh, uh, from, from yeah. that oak. So um, that's the, uh, the the American X, uh, the one that we'll give to you first. And uh, the other one that we uh, challenged you with, and I just I just learned how to pronounce this week, and I hope I get it's it tough. right. Who did it? Did. Who did it? Did. Yeah, yeah. We, you don't pronounce the SK apparently. This is who yeah, did it? But this, this is um, this is a, a this is one of my favourites at the moment. Actually, so I'm really pleased, uh, and I'm actually having a little quaff on the side, <laughs> just to get warmed up on this one. But the wonderful thing about this one, it was finished in um, some Massi Amarone casks. Um, Amarone and uh, the Apesimento type of grapes where they dry the grapes out, make them more concentrated and give you that extra burst of fruit and flavor uh, in, the, in the wine. Uh, so we managed to get a hold of a number of casks and we put our, our whiskey inside there. Um, between seven and 13 year old whiskeys we put in there and aged it probably I think about 18 months and the flavor profile of that is really quite complex. So we're, this isn't easy stuff guys, I know. So you know, <laughs> there's a lot going on in, in, in these whiskeys. So, um, but these two whiskeys, um, these these are kind of what we call uh, seasonal whiskies from McMira. And just so happens, right now, we've got a deal on our seasonal pack. Which wow. Buy the seasonals to get all six of them. You get a whopping one third off the price. So that is over 120 quid knocked off the price of all six bottles. So you're getting them at a ridiculous price. And um, there's such a range there and beautiful whiskey. So we're using these two tonight uh, to get us kicked off. So um, do you know what? I'm hungry, uh, thirsty for knowledge, and I'm thirsty for some cocktails. So Charles, are you going to kick us off with your first cocktail? What have you got for us, my friend? Yeah, so basically, uh, as you're talking, generally describing the whiskey there, when we, because we're using the American Esque is the first one, if I'm saying that right. Um, it's juniper lead, as you were saying, light oak notes. With, I taste kind of soft vanilla in there as well. So the cocktail I'm going to be using just kind of embodies that kind of flavor pattern. So I'm going to shake it with my tea syrup that I've made. So that's just that. 
So basically, wow. what's in there? What's in there, Charles? That looks. You look like a laboratory. <laughs> no, this is not stolen from any bar that I've worked in. Uh, basically, I've just cold steeped it, so just cold infused it, put it in the fridge. So that is the actual whiskey itself with wow. some of the tea leaves. So it's got hibiscus in there, rose hips, cranberries, dried dried orange. Not actual tea leaves, but just the actual dried fruits <coughs> themselves. So just to give that kind of floral uh, touch to it. Then I'm just wow. going to add some egg white. These could not be more organic. They could not be more local. Thank you very much, mother-in-law, for letting me <laughs> steal some eggs. Um, <laughs> I was going to add a little bit of rhubarb syrup. And I mean a little, I literally mean a little spoon of it. So these are pretty intense fruit flavors that are going in here. What What's what your thoughts about mixing this with the smoke? What, is, is it, is it going to enhance it? I was thinking that because of the actual smokiness, the light peat you know, so I was getting from there, I felt like this would actually survive the bashing of these kind of fruits. I've added right. a little bit of citrus in there, which is just a dash of grapefruit bitters. Right. And then what you're looking for most cocktails is just to get that balance of sweet and sour. Um, but yeah, I, I felt like it's quite a robust whiskey. It's very easy to drink on its own. Literally just a cold glass, no ice, just as it is. Yep. It's, it's sufficient enough. Um, I thought it just, I think it would really last with actual fruit flavors. So I'm just going to shake that now. Here's a noisy bit. These guys have always got great guns, haven't they? They've got big guns, these guys, that shake the cocktails all day. I feel like just one, one gun. <laughs> just one. <laughs> There you go. So that should be sufficient shaking. I'm just going to taste that. So that should just give quite light creamy temperature to the drink itself. Beautiful. Wow. I'm just going to stir that in there. So you're calling this a Miss Mac, is that right? Yeah. So I think of like a, not a lady with a vengeance, but strong, confident, beautiful woman. Who knows her business, who knows yeah. what she likes, and she likes this. Oh, what is that serving pot? Oh, wow. <laughs> the most extravagant I, thing. I have to compliment you on the uh, name as well, Charles, because if yeah. I'm not mistaken, that's a twist on a white lady. So it calling is. it something like Ma Miss Mac leads to the brand and the, wow. the classic that you're riffing it on. Yes, so, very yeah. well. Thank you very much, Charlie, for that. It was. What's that? You just <laughs> topped it up bit. with, Charles. A little bit accidental. So I've just topped it with uh, basically a ginger soda. Oh, okay. it a fiery burst just at the end. Wow. And what it does is just makes it kind of foam up. So I wish good. I could be there to taste it or I could make it myself. Yeah. But I'm not in that league. <laughs> not in that league. <laughs> and then just a few of the berries. Oh. Them in. And that's it. Wow. That's so, incredible. That's that's straws. Amazing. These are weak. Give no us a plastic. taste of it. Tell us, what it, tell us what it's like. And while you're doing that, um, what I want to know is really what makes a competition cocktail different in essence from your average cocktail that you're going to see at a cocktail bar that we all see on the menus? What, what is it that sets it apart? So this, the, what sets it apart basically is you have less to think about when it's a competition, as in as a bar manager or bar supervisor, you're thinking, how much money can I make out of this? You're thinking of the GP, so the cost of it. Then you're thinking of can people make it, a sense of staff. Can you replicate the taste? So it's always good to have good ideas. If the taste kind of falls flat by the fifth different bartender making it, then it's not really a good con a cocktail. You don't, never want to be in a position where they go, is it okay if uh, Charlie makes it? <laughs> is it okay if Camille makes it? Is it okay if yeah. Stacey makes it? You want it to be the same every single day, always. So that's the difference in approach. When it's a competition, anything. You so can just so make the it. gloves are off, you've got free yeah. reins, you don't have to worry about making money, about speed to get it on the bar. No, you know, exactly. it's about yeah. it's about the, the mixture of flavors and, and, and textures uh, to get something that's creative. And, exactly. and how many times would you normally, normally practice this kind of stuff, rehearse uh, a cocktail before you think it's ready? I'd say that bartender to bartender, some are more methodical, some are more, it's more their, their, their one thing that they're focusing on. Um, so for me personally, I would practice up to the date. So generally, you get about two months. Okay. Uh, for for, sometimes a month is enough. 
I literally I push myself to do it to practice it on the last two weeks and I come up with the concept before. I'm not being funny, Charles, but that must cost a fortune in ingredients. How, how do you how do you go about sort of funding that? Well, we're, we're lucky in this industry. If you're working about in, in the hospitality industry, bartender or not, literally within the whole hub, um, you get to talk to a lot of people and you get a lot of free stuff anyway. So yeah. generally, if if Charlie is like she said, she's stuck to a, a, a torch, she can just go on grafters. The torch will be there in an hour. There's right. so many people. It's, it's one here. of the nicest Beautiful. industries I think I I've ever worked in in terms yeah. of community yeah. Yeah. yeah so we've all got kind of fa facebook pages for different yeah. regions like i know there's one for nottingham and yeah. i know there's one for leicester ah. which is another fantastic city for cocktail yeah. but exactly. uh, uh we'll kind of go oh no i only need 10 mil of this and i don't really want to buy a whole bottle um <laughs> and people are, and gives you yeah a always really. willing to help out and of course if you wow. work in a cocktail bar they tend to be supportive yeah. and of course cocktail competitions more from the judging side as i know yeah. Brands sometimes do use cocktail competitions as a bit of a marketing angle, so they'll also be happy to provide you with some stock so you can do your exactly. practicing. Because, you know, as they say, practice makes permanent. <laughs> it does. Well, Charlie, I see your ice is it's about melting now, so um, we better It is. If you just give show. me... Yeah, You're thank on. you. You're if you on. give me two seconds, I've also just got to get a frozen glass. So. Oh, a frozen glass out of the fridge. Oh, wow. I just had mine delivered here. Uh, my, my glasses, are, they're just on the side there. Hand-delivered um, glassware. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, a side, that's a side job. Yeah. I've got a little delivery service on the side here. So this is not just good, good practice in general, uh, wow. something that would certainly have in a cocktail bar. But also, if you're doing something like a competition, certainly from my perspective as a judge, it's those attention to details. Like, for example, this drink specifically isn't yeah. served on ice. So after I've stirred it with some ice to chill it in the first place, I don't want it to get any warmer after that. So if my glass is frozen, that won't happen. OK. So, uh, but yeah, that's... Through. So we are doing the... Svensk Rook. No, no, okay. no. Rook. Yeah. First. Rook, the American X. Yeah. Yeah. So I've gone down a herbal route with my drink because when I tasted it, I really, really enjoyed the fact that as well as peaty smoke, you get a lovely note from uh, the juniper smoke that's used yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, I've done a lot of work with gin and that made me really excited, to be honest. So nice. that nice, really herbal, herbaceous background, I've really played into that. And then I've kind of used Swedish uh, influences and kind of flavor profile uh, to kind of back up my other flavors. So what I wanted great to name, the, the Garden of Sweden. Ah, Gar Garden of Sweden, yeah, for all the herbs in there. Uh, so I did a, I did a quick Google search, as as I often do for competitions, uh, just to do some initial research. Uh, when I looked at, I found this thing called just. It's a, it's kind of almost medicinal Swedish bitters. Oh, okay. uh, so it's really well, good for digestion. So I would highly recommend this drink for after a meal. <laughs> right. And uh, they, yeah. So the things in there include uh, rhubarb root, valerian root. Uh, I've also added gentian root. Uh, so the, the Germans have got oh, like bitters as well, like that. Cardamom yeah. as well. Yeah. If you don't have access to something like that. Um, because I, I did make my own because I've got quite the spice rack at home. So this right. is my homemade ingredient. I made my own Swedish bitters cordial using also some, uh, not wow. Swedish, unfortunately, but lockdown, uh, some orange wine. Wow. Um, so back up with a little fruit flavor. Uh, but you could also use for a bitter note. Uh, an Amaro or a different herbal liqueur. There's so many out there. It's unbelievable. Um, something like uh, Fernabranca would work quite nicely, a nice menthol note. Uh, or if you wanted to play into that orange a little bit more, something like Amaro Montenegro, which has kind of got a more rose flavor. Uh, but for me, I wanted to keep it truly Swedish. Just the more in a competition you bring it back to the brand, okay. the more ticks I'm going to give you when I'm judging. Yeah. <laughs> And then possibly uh, my only, no, not my only. So I've also got uh, a little bit of Pedro Jimenez. Oh, 
Okay. Just to back up those vanilla notes that are so prevalent in the whiskey from those Virgin American we, oak We use quite a lot of casks with Oloroso in them uh, to finish the casks and uh, introducing that uh, Oloroso flavour. Uh, I don't think we use PX, mainly, mainly Oloroso. <laughs> Yeah, I I love me some PX. It just makes me think of Christmas, and that makes me happy. So, anything uh, to cheer yourself up during gloomy, rainy lockdown. And then... I mean, the biggest ice cubes in the world. They're the cubes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, yeah. They're huge. Ooh, I like. So of course, well, I'd be tempted to use my hands there, but you're a professional. As I say, I I am normally introduced to a judging panel uh, to be the technical judge. So there'll normally be a judging panel, someone technical that really knows about cocktails, someone from the brand that can uh, back up whether someone said something true or false about the brand, and then usually someone from the venue uh, where you're having said competition, just as a polite thank you to get them involved. Because uh, it's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes into cocktail competitions. A lot of cleaning, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It's always nice to say thanks for doing all that for us. So, so your technical angle, Charlie. I mean, how how does that break down then? You know, what what it, what what is technically encompassed in terms of the categories that you're looking at? So sometimes when I uh, join in, I'll have the the brand will already provide a form that's got very very specific points. Ah. But they usually break down into five-ish main sections. Taste is obviously the most important. If it doesn't taste any good, you're not going to win. <laughs> um, something really similar but quite often overlooked, and I'm about to demonstrate as well, so that's handy, aroma. So aroma uh, and your nasal passage and olfactory bulb are such an important part of how you taste that yeah. the way a cocktail smells makes a world of difference, especially if you didn't want to put the ingredient because it's quite overpowering in the cocktail. Mm. Uh, and then you've also got appearance. Does it look pretty? Uh, I've gone for less of a flamboyant glass, but more of just a <laughs> classy crystal beautiful whiskey glass. Uh, and name sometimes uh, just come up. So using the brand name as Charles did, like that is that would be a big thumbs up. Yep. And uh also knowledge in general like your cocktail knowledge your in this case it would be whiskey knowledge or knowledge about the brand like have you done your research do you care about the brand do you love the brand or are you just here for free drinks <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite parallel to the whiskey world where you you know you know you look at the appearance uh, and you know yeah. it yeah and you know the first, yeah it really the, really is Whiskey cocktails are a world of fun. Uh, yeah. So what I'm doing now is I have in a little spritz bottle, uh, not sponsored, but available widely in your local boot store. If if you you don't need fancy equipment, honestly, that is my big, you know. Um, that, that's there is, not hairspray, is it? It's not. So I've actually got something called pastis, which is like a French version of uh, absinthe. It's a little bit higher in sugar content. Um, and it's it's what I have at home rather than absinthe. So this is a twist on a Sazerac. And normally with a Sazerac, you would rinse the glass with absinthe. But right. what I'm doing is I'm doing a spritz instead. Wow. Uh, because I don't want as much. So I'm just doing, it didn't quite work properly there, but the single spritz will distribute the aroma kind of in the glass, around the glass. So you're going to get that aroma, but it's not in the drink itself. So it's not going to oh. overpower all those other flavors good. so that you can still taste everything else that's in there and this is one of my i'm so glad this has worked out otherwise i'd have been looking silly so something <laughs> i always uh, look out for in cocktail competitions is this thing that you you may not be familiar with unless unless you're a cocktail or bar nerd is uh this gap between where the liquid is and yeah, where the top of the glass is is called the wash line the wash so, line. Oh. Yeah. So for something like Charles's drink, which is a foamy egg white drink, you would want that all the way to the top right. because egg white blocks aroma and you want it, just sour drinks in general. You want that all the way to the top. But something yeah. like a very uh, th a much thinner liquid stirred down drink like this, you want it to be lower so you don't spill the drink everywhere. It's all about physics at the end of the day. That's right. why I'm the technical judge. <laughs> <laughs> so, Charlie, you Charlie. must have competed in a lot of, uh, a lot of competitions, have you? Mm. Take, yeah, quite, like. quite a few. Any, anyone that knows me knows I've done a fair few to get to judging. They don't just ask. Yeah. Um, 
you know, just after one or two. I've had several years of it and it did accumulate in uh, two years ago. Finally, uh, I ended up with three national wins and an international win for wow. a few different cocktail competitions. And it was amazing. I would say that international one, uh, it was for gin. It really put me through my paces because not only did you have to do just one, not two, not even three, but four drinks with an eight minute time limit and you had to tell your story and you only got to, we had to go shopping for our ingredients. We only had one day to get our ingredients and a budget. Um, it was, yeah, really put you through your paces. It's kind of tough competition. Yeah, and wow. uh, But it was a whole lot of fun. The competitions, I say, if anyone, any bartenders out there watching, thinking, oh, yeah. I'm too nervous to do a cocktail competition, doesn't have to start there. Um, some of my favorites still are to go back to your local competitions where they're really fun. And like you say, there's that community and everyone's there to cheer you on. Yeah. And you can be really, Absolutely. really experimental because the stakes aren't as high, if you get me. So oh, right. you can start putting all sorts in your drinks and really going for it. One, one of my uh, rejects, uh, well, not rejects, but a, a drink that I thought would be a little bit too complicated to put onto the show uh had cheese that's in it. not complicated <laughs> <laughs> well that's the difference you see Cocktail, cocktail competitions are getting harder and harder because bartenders are just getting better and better right and and, and, and just tell us about the cocktail itself because i saw you tasted it it, it looks superb ah, give, give, give us the, give yeah, us the essence of the flavor element so yeah the first thing i'm getting is that lovely anise note which i find compliments i got a little bit of licorice on the taste of the whiskey itself so i wanted to compliment that and then as you drink the whiskey you get really nice smoky flavor vanilla still comes through um i'm getting almost a pine rosemary-esque leading like really earthy herbal flavors um uh, basically everything that i've added to the drink and as as for any competition shouldn't take away from the base spirit it should spirit, add yeah. to it and complement it yeah. so if i went and added you know a full, even if i added a bar spoon worth of that uh pastis it would have overridden right, right. all of the other flavors so it really is a balancing act so we've got physics we've got gymnastics <laughs> <laughs> chemistry <laughs> well um the balance is quite key to to macmira because a lot of what we put out are recipes and we have lots of ingredients and uh um angela derizio our, our master blender or chief nose officer as we call her she she has all these super ingredients and it's her talents as blending them it's not getting anything that's slapping in your face it's it's, it's about the combination and, th and that's where we come on to uh, you know from the um the, the hertited um where it's a blend of the uh the, the the finish in the amarone and the natural dna of the whiskey that we have which has got pears and apples and putting that together and she she tries and, and does a lot of, of of that blending it's not just putting it in a barrel of the way so um there's a lot of effort goes into making just the core whiskey and then uh, you know to hear your thoughts on how you then complement that is really interesting to to take it at other places so thanks for that charlie that's that looks absolutely super i wish i could taste it um <laughs> I'll, I'll send you one in the post oh marvelous marvelous well camille I, thanks for being patient my friend i mean you're number three today i'm sorry about that but the guests outrank you today um, yeah, I'm know. going. I, I, I can go now. You don't need me anymore. <laughs> you have got Come two back. amazing people there. Yeah. So I can go and do something else. <laughs> no, 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 mate. You, 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 you can nail this. Come on. Don't be nervous now. These, the, the, these I'm guys nervous are doing... now. I've seen those guys. They're so, good. They are so <laughs> skilled. So I'm so nervous to do my drink, which is uh, not that uh, incredibly looking like this, but I'll try. Okay. Uh, so the, for these drinks, I was inspired by Moscow Mule, which is vodka based cocktail with ginger character but when you make twist on moscow mule or something like this and you change vodka for a whiskey or two type of whiskey the complete uh, the cocktail is just m much more complex and nicer and better and is as full of flavor uh because i'm gonna use a mix of both whiskeys and the ginger i think it's perfect cocktail for the father's day father's day okay yeah i'm father i'm gonna make the sale I'm going to make this cocktail for myself on the Father's Day. So Okay. Just a reminder to everybody that uh, who's a father, to get out there and get their cards. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with uh, fresh ginger. Ah. Just a couple of slices. 
and I'm gonna muddle this just ginger just gently just to release some of the juice into there. Okay, okay, I smashed a little bit up earlier, so I've got that. I'm playing along with you, Camille, so watch out. So first whiskey will be 25 mil of uh, Scottish Amarone wine finish. 25 mil, that's a little glug, isn't it? <laughs> Just a uh, standard single shot. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to be professional. I'm going to measure it. There we go. An equal measure, also 25 mil of uh, Swain's Rock American. Okay. Egg. Just to add some smoky flavor. Let it all marry together with the ginger juice. Now, twenty-five ml of fresh lime juice. Okay. Squeeze that lime out. <laughs> <clears throat> to balance it out, just 12 and a half ml of sugar syrup. Sugar syrup. So this is the sweet, the sour, the classic kind of combinations going together. Yes, you can go more with this sugar, but I like just slightly less so I can taste the sourness more. And also two dashes of Angostura bitters. Two dashes. Whoa. Oh, I okay. just flashed uh, all over my script. <laughs> <laughs> just shake it with all the rice. Put a bit of ice in there. Okay. I'm going to have to stir mine down. I haven't got a shaker with me. Uh, quality check. Is that working? <laughs> Please don't tell me you lost Camille. Because I, I, I have to finish the cocktail off myself. <laughs> I want... Come back to us, Camille. Are we Come there? On, come back to us, buddy. You're nearly there. I'm here. Oh, there he is. Wow. Can you? Technical, you're yes. back, you're back. See me, got it. Okay. Yeah, I think we've lost Camille, or oh, his bandwidth's gone or something something like that. He was nearly at the end of a, a great great cocktail there. <laughs> we're, at the, we're at the scurrying stage. Um, I don't know if it's going to be down to me to try and finish <laughs> off Camille's special thing. I'm going to struggle. I'm going to talk until he's back. And he's back. Excellent. <laughs> Just in time. I'm Come back. On, Camille, carry on. Just need a bit of sound from you, I think. Okay. So I was planning to use a copper mark, but I changed my mind because I can oh. see everybody has beautiful glassware. So I'm going <laughs> to go with this base. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, there's no ashes in there, is there? So this is. I love a copper. So this is a special way base made in Sp Spain by a small family. It's handmade and beautiful. is uh, designed for cocktails for a competition. But I never enter one yet. But I'm going with the Charles next time in Charlie. So. <laughs> So I said, Camille, you've never entered a competition cocktail. You never done a competition. No, cocktail. I was cage fighting before. Ah, cage fighting. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Listen, we've all seen your skills now. You've got to do it, man. That's what you list for this year. Right, we've got to top this up over here with um, some Fever Tree ginger ale. Not beer, not ginger beer. It has to be slightly less gingery. Is that right, Camille? Yes, uh, for a traditional Moscow meal, you need ginger beer, but ginger beer is very powerful ingredients and it will it can easily overpower your cocktail. And for a whiskey, I didn't want to have ginger beer there, so I just uh, substitute that for a ginger ale. Ah, okay. But we're using fresh ginger, so we're going to have some gingery flavor there. Lovely. Give that a little... Oh, 
certainly, you certainly get the hit of the ginger. The, the fresh ginger just explodes on the nose, the aroma from the fresh ginger that's in there, the muddled ginger. Yeah, and it's some extra fresh ginger for garnish. So when you sip it, you can know, uh, also smell it a little bit. Okay, ah. hey, there you go. Fantastic. Well, tell us what you think about it, and I'll tell you about mine. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> was, that, was that a competition-winning cocktail for you? A, a, bit a bit of critique? Oh, yeah, full marks from me. Full marks. It's very good. I love the glass. <clears throat> See, I know the glass will work. I, I can make shit cocktail, but the glass will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it tastes well, actually really good. It's one of my favorite uh, twists on mule, to be honest. Right. Good. Good. Cheers. Angel, what do you cheers. think, well, It's, it's superb. I mean, I'm really enjoying this, Scott. This is um, uh, it's uh, the, the ginger essence pulls it off, but the, the there is just the underlying smokiness still there, and um, a, a, a slight herby edge from the um, from, from, from the amarone as well. So it, you're right; it doesn't kill the the whiskey flavors in in here, and that's the whole point of a cocktail is that you can still um, you can still taste the flavors of the whiskey that's, that's going forward. So that's great, Camille. Well done. You're off the hook. I thought you might flounder, but you did it, mate. Uh, you can now breathe a big sigh of relief. But these two guys have still got two more. Um, so we're going to uh, back to Charlie now. Uh, Charlie's going to give us her second uh, expression. Um, this one's called uh, Midnight Sun. Yeah, so I'll give a little uh, little story behind the name of that one. It's a little less obvious than uh, Garden of Sweden. So in Sweden, of course, uh, if you go really north in Sweden, you do have a phenomenon, as well as the beautiful Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, you have something called the Midnight Sun. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it in Swedish in case I offend anyone. Uh, but uh, yeah, in the most northernmost cities, uh, places like Arisco and many more I can't pronounce <laughs> uh, basically they don't have sunlight or they have very very minimal sunlight only for sort of four hours or so in the day um, so I wanted to make a cocktail kind of inspired by that um, right. kind of lack, lack like just beautiful again the northern lights and just the the lovely kind of atmosphere that comes with nighttime. Like I personally, I'm sure Charles might be the same as a bartender, kind yeah. of a little bit nocturnal. So I love oh, I love me well some done. dusk, some some nighttime. Like I get more productive at night time. I am not a morning person. I am not an early bird. Um I so I uh what yeah, so I want to make a cocktail. So of course um thinking again about more of the flavors bring it back to the whiskey itself i get so many notes of like lovely red fruit baking spices um it is amazing how much impact uh the the, the amarone casks have had on the whiskey it's beautifully mellowed like a finish on a whiskey kind of brings all the other blend of different casks kind of together back to one point um yeah and yeah. red red wine cask finish are some of my favorite um, because the casks themselves, they are usually made of European oak, which is different in structure. So yeah. here we are, back, back to the nerdy stuff, uh, to American oak. So American trees have a, are gonna have a completely different, what's called terroir, a bit like the wine industry where they grow than yeah. a European tree. But not just that, but the, the wood itself, based on the climate and what nutrients it gets, the wood grain grows differently. So the staves, which is the, the panels that you use to make up the barrel, uh, absorb different rate of whiskey so the aging process on a chemical basis completely changes and then that's where my understanding stops i, th I think of whiskey barrels like a sponge whiskey goes <laughs> in whiskey comes out and more flavor gets added but it, in terms of the actual what's going on that's that's for someone with some sort of degree in whiskey <laughs> Um, so yeah, play, <laughs> playing on those flavor notes, I and, and the inspiration of the Midnight Sun, I wanted to do a coffee-based drink. Now, this is where, hang on, let me just put my whiskey mm, in. I'm so a big coffee fan. The, the, important, the important part of the whiskey. So you want, uh, Gareth, if you're playing along at home, 60 mils of whiskey. And this is another part yeah. where competitions differ because you they tend to be li more liberal with the amount of alcohol you put in uh, which is always fun as a judge because it's this <laughs> more to drink <laughs> okay. um so yeah play, playing on those flavors um 
uh, the coffee. So I wanted to do coffee, coffee based drink. And uh, I unfortunately locked down, don't have access to, well, I have access to coffee, but not coffee liqueur. So I did have a go at making my own. And purely by some stroke of luck, I will hold it up to the camera, hopefully. Uh, I've got these, not ah. sponsored again, <laughs> uh, Nespresso cloud berry pods. Wow. So, so cloud good. berry is actually a Swedish berry along with lingonberry. You might have had lingonberry jam uh, before. That's a little bit more mainstream. But cloud berry has this lovely or just red berry, almost floral note, a bit like Charles is using the hibiscus. Um, no. I've gone for, and uh, I've basically done a cold brew infusion uh, overnight and then topped that up with neutral spirit and um, sugar syrup just to make that into a coffee liqueur. And you might wow. be thinking, okay, okay, I see where this is going. This is going to be an espresso martini twist, is it? <laughs> nah, it is a less, slightly lesser known cocktail. It is a whiskey classic called a revolver. Oh. So a revolver is a really sophisticated drink. It is one of my favorite cocktails. I discovered it uh, however many years ago when I had the fantastic opportunity to uh, work in a now infamous bar called Last Chance. Uh, which is in Nottingham. Anyone Last that... Chance Saloon. Last, it was, it was Last Chance Saloon. Sorry, I'm calling it its nickname. Uh, yeah, Last Chance Saloon. Uh, absolutely loved it there. I learned so much about whiskey there. Um, and this is where I discovered Revolver. So what you want is, normally it's a two to one ratio, but I'm not sure if it's because of the way I've made the coffee liqueur. It's quite an intense flavor. There's a lot of coffee and a lot of uh, fruity notes in there. So I don't want to do a two to one ratio for my revolver. I'm actually going for a six to one, which wow. is how I make my martinis, if anyone <laughs> is uh, interested. So I only want, because there's 60 mil of the whiskey, I only want 10 mil of the coffee liqueur. And you'll also notice I'm using the stirring, uh, the mixing glass again to stir. Um, so the difference between shaking a cocktail as you would something like a coffee drink, like an espresso martini and stirring a drink is you will have more what's called dilution if you shake it. So you will literally add more water, which is fine. Uh, that's completely normal. Uh, you will also add more air because you are shaking it you literally add air bubbles into the structure of the cocktail and i don't want that for this drink i want it to feel really desserty and umptuous and luxurious so i'm stirring it to avoid adding air and then my final ingredient is what i put in the notes as being any kind of red fruit or red berry syrup because ideally i'd continue in that swedish line and i wanted to use lingonberry to Ring back berries. up that cloudberry unfortunately uh, being locked down it's a little bit more difficult to get hold of lingonberries uh, but i do have a scottish ingredient again little known it's actually by a really neat little lovely uh, scottish whiskey company called bramble and uh, they make chuckleberry liqueur which is oh. actually the most similar if you wanted the most similar you'd probably go for something like red currant or raspberry uh, I think those I've had sort of their raspberry liqueur before um, yeah the, the guys yeah. They're, they're really good yeah i've had I've, I've done those before i've gone for the home method here and i've used a little espresso sweetened espresso and a little uh, stir of a uh, raspberry jam <laughs> fabulous yeah that will that'll get you there in a similar aspect not a problem and we stir this in we do stir that in yeah you so... that, okay <laughs> Camille's overwhelmed. He's, he's disappeared. <laughs> Maybe the pizza's arrived for Friday night. I don't know. <laughs> Excellent. So come um, on, Charles. This is your chance to uh, critique back on, on Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know where you got your spoon, Gareth. I really want that one. That looks good. It's like a multi-use spoon. Yes. <laughs> I try to Excuse clean, me. clean cocktails, though. <laughs> Pineapple. What's more multi-use than pineapples, eh? If anyone doesn't know, Charlie Carrington is obsessed with pineapple-shaped objects, pins, badges, anything that's pineapple. Please send her way. She loves them. She adores okay, them. Okay, so you must yes. have the loud pineapple we, we have clipped, we, shirt. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, multiple. You're not wearing it. <laughs> uh, I've gone for the classy cocktails today. 
Ah. Uh, I have many pattern shirts, but also, as as Charles says, many pineapple themed objects, pins, clothing <laughs> attire, uh, and many pineapple facts. <laughs> Wow. Just, uh, so guys, so, tell me, I mean, I, you know, I've been around the bars in a little while. Um, why, why is it that um, whiskey cocktails are, are, don't seem to be that prevalent in, in a lot of bar menus that, that I've seen? Kind of, you might get one or two shoved on the back somewhere, but um, yeah. I, is it because generally there, is, is whiskey not a, a push thing in, in, the, in the bar industry or is it, is it just lack of uh, education, do you think? I think it's like a combination of both. It depends on the venue itself. Like Charlie herself, she works in a, a venue focused solely on whiskey the whiskey right. affair really amazing bar in nottingham and their, their approach is is from the, the object of we're not here to like scare you about whiskey we'll give you the light approach and the journey of different whiskeys like if you go to their bar there's so many hundreds of different types of whiskeys and i yeah. feel like the general consumer is kind of apprehensive especially in the cocktail bar a lot of people think oh i've ordered this it sounded good I don't like it. And they, they feel like that's it. The first time they have their bad experience, they don't want to order something again for fear of not liking it. But by all means, order a cocktail, speak to the bartender, especially when you see we have a little bit of time. They will tell you what cocktail you'd actually like. And especially when it comes to whiskey, you could there'll be loads of different whiskeys you'd like in a whiskey bar that you would never in a million years think, wow, oh, I actually like Kabiki. That's just, so like we, like yeah, we have a couple of tropical whiskey cocktails. Yeah. Uh, so because whiskey has reached a point where you can get so many different varieties, cask finishes, uh, we like to play around with them a little bit, or I certainly do, uh, it, almost in the same way that tiki cocktails are created. Uh -huh. So you get different types of rum with different casks, different regions, it all changes. So if yeah. you, do, you can do that with whiskey too, and you can create some fantastic flavors. Uh, we, we do a twist on a penicillin that's, uh, that's very tropical and is actually our most popular cocktail. Uh, right, I'm going to give this a so, go now, Charlie. I don't know if you're going to do it at the same yeah. time. Oh, no, we've got we one more step, one more step. Uh, so if you remember, I talked about aroma. So the aroma for this is going to be in the form of orange. Absolutely right. I've got my little bit of orange here. So yeah. uh, what you want to do I have is orange, I'm gonna use lime. give it a squeeze over the glass to exp what's called express the oils. And you should see the oils physically come out of the peel. And then what you want to do is hold yeah. the base of the glass yeah. so it doesn't fall over. And then wipe the oil around the glass as well for all the lovely aromas. And then if you want to go one step further, here's like Blue Peter style, one I prepared earlier because it's cut and prettier. And then put that in there as well. Uh, if you also wanted to have a cherry or a cloudberry or a lingonberry, you can whack that in there. Uh, but yeah, it's like a more coffee infused Manhattan if you've ever had a Manhattan. And yeah. then uh, just to uh, uh, let you know, it does taste delicious. You have to take my word for it. Well, well, uh, but my, if I, I was, I, I love that I orange was, aroma from the peel. Yeah. Just, you're not even in there, so, and you know yeah. so everything is excited yeah. by it, isn't it? As, but, you, as uh, you said, Charlie, it's like uh, for me when I tasted it first time, it actually tastes like coffee in Manhattan. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah, wow. revolvers. Amazing. Honestly, if I could introduce more people to revolvers, I, I feel like that's a win for me. But if I was doing this for a competition, uh, I would do this. I, I'll just pretend that's served on the side. So these are, I don't know if you've ever had Biscoff biscuits. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So they've oh, yeah. got cinnamon and all those baking spices notes uh, that I get from the co uh, the sorry the whiskey uh, that I just want, would want to back up the drink as like a food pairing. And from a judge's perspective, if someone gives me snacks, that's that's another tick on the box. Yeah. <laughs> love a good love a good Bribery. snack with my cocktail. Yeah, exactly. Bribery. Yeah. <laughs> Bribery and corruption, I tell you. Well, this is one. It's got yeah. two of my favourite things in the world: coffee and whiskey. But I mean, the blend of that as well, and the sweetness of the of the fruit of the jam coming through on it. it it's not very complex to do. I mean, you, know, you see me. I mean, I'm that's, that's I why I wanted it. one one that's kind that's of wonderful. Uh, yeah. So my twist on the sazerac, perhaps a little less accessible because I made a couple of the ingredients. Yeah. But having wow. that one where yeah. there's kind of more simple substitutes. So, okay, it, this, so this is what I'd make for a cocktail competition where I've got the time and the access, but the version you've made to follow along at home, that's what would go on the menu for consistency, for ease, etc. 
So, I see. I see. Well, it's well, amazing. It's really nice. Well done. It's beautiful. Thank beautiful. you. Um, what, uh, you know, it's 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 really exciting. My taste buds. But we've got to move on. We haven't got much time left, and we've got one fantastic time uh, cocktail to come. And I love the name, uh, Return of the Mac. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I want I want the music on. You know. I know. I know. I know. So, so yeah. Charles, what well, this looks? I, I can make this. This this has got three ingredients in it. This is right up my street. This is so. Uh, but tell us about it. What, what what what? How do you put this together, and why? So this one took a little bit, of work, a little bit of time in terms of matching the flavor profile. Like Charlie said, you have to think of it in the, in the different levels in terms of the cocktail and chilled frozen glass ready. Reminded me. Frozen glass. I actually did that halfway through because Charlie reminded me. So thank you. <laughs> I was like, oh uh, yeah, I think I forgot something. And that that always happens in competitions. You're like, yeah, I should. Damn. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah. Having tasted this. Um, Ford to Ted, I said that right. Um, it's Ooh, soft, it's spicy. I'd say quite autumnal, and like Charlie was talking about, the in sense of the the wine uh, procedure, in sense of how it's made and the, the notes. It's quite medium bodied, so I wanted to make something light. Don't want to complicate it. This one I don't want to bash, same as the last one. So it's called Return of the Mac because it's the second one. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> as far as that. The concept when so i'm going to start with the slight it might be a little bit different to what i've sent to you already and uh, i've just added a few different things so i'm just going to add some chocolate bitters okay just a dash two dashes chocolate bitters and what i've done is similar to the cotta before i've infused the actual whiskey itself with uh, honey uh, honey syrup so what i've done is i've just taken a big chunk of organic honey <clears throat> boiled it down with some water just to get that Make it a little bit thinner so it's not thick, so it actually mixes. So if you add actual honey to cold, it's just a nightmare. It's not going to mix. Okay. It. So that's got, I've just got 51 of that and honey syrup. Well, I've also added to that as an extra ingredient, just a slight, like a five mil dash of a banana French liqueur, just to give it that banana chocolatey background. What you're going to have, the expression you're going to make is going to be really nice anyway. The one I have has just got a little tinge of banana profile in the background. Wow. Secret wow. ingredient. That wasn't on the list. That's a bit of a, that's a, bit of a surprise, there, Charles. Careful. I want to make that one. <laughs> <laughs> you came up with a surprise tonight. Just two large chunks and then stir it, stir it down. Glass is already frozen. So all we're doing when we're stirring is adding dilution. Adding dilution to the drink. The common thing people complain about in bars is you put too much ice in my drink. And um, we're not we're not trying to steal your money. I promise you, we're trying to give you the best drink possible. I implore anyone that has that attitude to grab whatever drink they want, uh, just just yeah. a glass of juice or water, and fill it to the brim with ice. Yeah, and then have one that's just got a couple of ice cubes in, and then watch them. Yeah. The one with fewer ice cubes, all yeah. the ice cubes will melt into the drink because of thermal dynamics. The yeah, one exactly. that's full of ice, the ice won't melt as fast. So actually, you're getting more yeah, drink, water. More, more more bang for your buck. Otherwise, you're just going to have a watery drink that's not going to taste very nice. Exactly. Okay. So stir that quite a bit, and then there you go. Here's my. There is a taste. Wow. Look at that. That's a, that sounds officer. delicious. I like that. Mm. Yeah, I'd give points for that. It's hy it is hygienic. As long <laughs> as you keep washing your hands. Regular <laughs> hand washing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just going to pour that straight in. Is it on the ice or without ice? No, this is without ice. I've got without the ice here. You can add it. You can add it in. There's not, nothing wrong with that. 100% will smash this ice cube if I do do that. Yeah. So, add that in there, that's fine. And then I'm just going to add some cocoa nibs. Cocoa nibs? What is a cocoa nib? I mean, <laughs> excuse my French. <laughs> so, cocoa nib is just um, shavings of cacao. It can be like shavings of dark chocolate. Uh, okay. This is from, um, like we we're saying by little freebies, this comes from a specific type of gin called Cholato, and it's on the side of the gin itself. It's complemented with orange. Uh, so right. I'm just adding a few of those cocoa nibs on there. And there you go, guys. This is Return of the Mac. Return of the Mac. Okay, I'm stirring in. 
Yeah, really easy, simple to make. Um, I made mad without the garnish, but uh, hopefully. <laughs> the popular trend now is cocktails literally as minimal minimalist as possible. Hmm. Yeah. Not a lot of attention mm. brought to it in sense of the garnish. Just focus on the actual flavors itself. Wow, simple. Yep. Absolutely delicious. That's wonderful. Mm. I love the honey working in there. Um, yeah. Just put the layer of sweetness on the top of there, even more so than the, the normal mm. McMirror, which is quite a sweet whiskey. It just layered a little bit of honey on there. That's lovely. Is it like a modern old fashioned or something like this? Yeah, it's a, literally basically like a stirred down old fashioned, and you're just adding okay. a little bit more vegetal honey syrup mm. to that. Just give that warm finish. Love it. Amazing. Wow. Fantastic. Well, well, look, guys, we're, we're running out of time a little bit now. I, I'd like to thank you for such a masterclass. We've got the uh, the competitor and the judge, and they've both been hammer and tongs. Camille's in the middle, trying to keep them apart. <laughs> and uh, we've had five fantastic cocktails tonight. Um, it's been wonderful to, uh, to to share that and your experiences and your uh, your knowledge and your, uh, you know, you're just class acts tonight, guys. Um, uh, you know, wish you all the uh, luck in the future. And, uh, you know, yeah. lockdown's going to come down soon. And uh, I'm sure you guys will excel uh, going going forward. Um, tonight, um, that's probably all we got. We got we got time for a, a bit of a final reminder about just a little bit of the commercial stuff we're doing. A seasonal pack there it is we use the two whiskies out of there tonight we use the spence rook american-esque uh in the virgin oak and we use the scripted hooter did and there are another four beautiful whiskies in there uh, i won't go through them all now have a look at the seasonal pack have a look at the uh website with that on and uh, it's a fantastic offer one third off that um and the, the links on the sh the links on the side and on the show and underneath we'll uh we'll share that share that with you um so Th thanks to uh, everybody involved, Charles and Charlie, for coming uh, and guesting with us tonight for preparing such great cocktails. Uh, Camille, obviously, we've got a couple of guys on the back who've uh, been helping us out. Uh, uh, Connor and uh, Shane and Richard uh, are on the uh, on the comments. Uh, so thanks for those guys for having us through. Sorry, it was a long show tonight. We had five cocktails to get through. Um, so uh, to everyone who watched tonight, thank you. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you again. Uh, thank see you. you, guys. Good night, Charlie. Guys, thank you. Ciao. Skull. Skull. Skull.